Hey everybody, this is Ben with devslopes.com. And in this video, we're gonna go ahead and build our next scene that we're gonna use for Pocket Droids Go, the capture scene. This is the scene that is probably gonna be one of the most fun parts of the game for our player. So we wanna make sure that it's set up just right. So we're gonna say goodbye to our world scene for just a bit and get started on it. To start, I'm gonna collapse that models menu that was open. And I'm going to expand scenes and create a new folder. So right click scenes, create folder, and I'm gonna call this capture. And then we'll right click the capture folder, create scene, capture. And then we're gonna want a script right off the bat to go with it. So let's right click the capture folder again, go to create and create a C-sharp script. And we're gonna call this capture scene manager. We're not gonna do much with this just yet, but we do wanna get it all set up with everything that we need. So let's double click the capture scene manager script and that'll open it up in our IDE. Now that we've got that open, we need to change what class this is inheriting from. So I'm gonna delete the mono behavior that it extends from by default. I'm gonna type in pocket droid scene manager. Now I've got some red squigglies going on and that's because we are missing two functions. To fix that, I'm gonna use the magic of JetBrains Writer, the IDE I'm using. And I'm just gonna click this light bulb and I'm gonna say implement missing members. And I'm gonna implement those two functions. For now, I don't need the start or update functions. So I'm gonna take those out so we can see these a little clearer. What you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have are these two functions. I'm gonna clear out these exceptions that are implemented. And we're going to want to make sure that we have public override void player tapped, which we pass a game object called player into. And we have another function called public override void droid tapped with a parameter of game object droid. Let's go ahead and set these up with a print statement. Just so we know that they've been activated if they're activated before we set these up for real. Inside of player tapped, let's type print and then in quotation marks put capture scene manager dot player tapped activated. And then down in droid tapped, we're going to do something pretty similar. We're just going to say print quotation mark, capture scene, capture scene, manager dot droid tapped activated. Save that file and let's head back to Unity. Now that our capture scene manager is at least a little set up, let's double click the capture scene to switch to it. What we've got before us now is just an empty scene. So let's start fixing that. Let's right click in the hierarchy and create a 3D object of type plane. Let's move the plane to zero, zero, zero. So zeros on all axes. And I'm gonna change the scale and we're gonna stretch this out quite a ways. I'm gonna multiply the scale on each axis by five. So X is gonna be five, press tab, Y is five, press tab, and Z is five. Now that we've got a pretty sizable plane, what do we wanna do with it? Well, we need some color, we need something to make it look good. So let's import a texture. If we open up our assets and go to the materials folder, we'll see this grass 001 color. Let's go ahead and create a spot for that. Expand the resources folder. We're gonna create a subfolder of resources. So 
right click it, go to create, and then click folder. And we're going to create a folder called materials. Now open up the assets and we're just going to grab this grass and drag it in. Perfect. Now we just need to click it and drag it onto this plane. And we're most of the way there. Click the plane to show it in the inspector. And we're going to go to the shader, well, the material rather, of this plane. Right here, this little orb that says grass 001 underscore color. And we're going to update the tiling. Under the main maps, we want to change that tiling, not the secondary maps. So let's change this to 15 and 15 for the X and Y. And now, as you can see on our game screen, it's a lot more fine, less coarse. Just for a good reference again, there's one and there's 15. Now it looks more like natural grass, about the way we'd see it in real life. Almost like the player is standing above it instead of having their face on the ground. And then we're going to give this grass a little bit of a cool effect to avoid just using the material as it is and to make it look a little better. If you remember in Mapbox Studio, we had a color for our background and it was a green kind of grassy color. We want to go ahead and grab that. So let's switch over to our browser. And I've already got it pulled up, but in case you don't remember, let's go to mapbox.com slash studio. And in your styles, you should have pocket droids go or whatever you named it. And I'm going to grab this land use park, click on the land use park, and I'm going to copy this hex value. And I'm going to minimize my browser. And I'm going to click on this color box by the albedo. And right now it's just set to white, but I'm going to replace this value with the color that we selected. And as you can see, the grass lightened up a little bit. If I click, if I press Control Z to undo, then you can see the original grass. Control Y to put it back. And now it actually matches our Mapbox Studio map. But there's one more step I want to take to make it look even cooler. I'm going to turn on emission. And I'm going to right click on the color by the albedo and select copy. And then I'm going to right click the color under emission and paste it. Now you'll notice it turned white. That's because the alpha is set way too high. So we're actually going to go and adjust this. I'm going to change it to 0.05. Now it's got a little bit of color emitting from the ground and really helping to get this color pronounced and make it make it look as if it's going on forever. You can see the edges of the color way back there getting emitted, and that's what we're going for. Now that we've got that set up and ready to go, let's go ahead and grab a droid. Because one of the main points of this is we're going to capture a droid. So we need to see how it looks on the field. So let's go to our models, and I'm just going to pick a random droid. Droid 2 is already open, so sure, that works. And I'm just going to drag it onto the scene. Now it's facing away, and there's a way that we're going to set this up to rotate that automatically so that it's always facing us, but we're not going to handle that right now. Since this is just a demo, and we're going to toss this, we can worry about that later. For now, let's just go ahead and rotate this guy on the Y axis by 180 degrees, so it's facing us. And then we just want to position it. Play around with it just a little bit. Sure, that looks about good. So the position I currently have it at is rotated 180 degrees. The position on the x-axis 
is negative 0 0.1. Y is 0. Z is going to be 2.4. 2 and we're going to take this droid and we're actually going to drag it onto the plane object. And the reason why will become apparent in a little bit. So we want our plane to have a droid on it. And that droid is going to be at negative 0.02, 0, 0, 0 0.48. Next, we're going to add a little bit of Mapbox action. Come up to the Mapbox SDK folder. And we're going to expand that and then expand the map box folder. And we are gonna grab this city simulator map and drag it onto our scene. And we're gonna push this city back just a little bit. We actually want it to be hanging out around, probably around there-ish. We'll see how 47.4 for the Z axis looks. And for just a minute, we're going to talk about this city simulator map option that Mapbox has for us. It's really cool. It's a great way to implement cities in a static context. And I'm going to show you why right now. Let's go ahead and press play. And you'll notice that we now have a city as part of our map. And all we're going to do is check and see about where we want our plane to match up with it. Because if you notice, it's a little bit off. Let me click off of it so we can see a little clearer. And I'm going to zoom in up here in the environment inspector, in the scene inspector, rather. You'll see that the scene kind of pops up through the grass. And things just don't line up. It's not quite right. So what we're going to do is this map, by default, snaps to zero. And there's not much we can do about that at this point in time. So what we'll do instead is move our plane. We want to move it up just a touch, just enough to where it's coming up and covering this city. About there is good. Now, if we look at our actual game, we've got a city going on in the background. And we've got buildings up front, so it looks like we're really in the middle of the city. And this is kind of the perfect scene for what we're doing. So let's take a look at Y. And Y is currently at 0 0.34. So we're going to remember that number and stop running. Now we're going to update the Y value on our plane to 0 0.34. And if we press play again, you'll see that it rises up and we can see the road coming through. We can see the buildings, but there aren't any mesh collisions going on causing spotty graphics, which is what we were going for. So perfect. That's great. There is one way that we could make this look even cooler, though, and make it a more cohesive experience. We are going to go and grab the URL for our map from Mapbox Studio and implement it here so that the coloring of the roads and everything involved is the exact same as our world scene. So let's stop running and go back to Mapbox Studio. And I'm going to go back, click the menu, grab the URL and copy it, and go back to Unity. Now I'm going to click on my city simulator map. And here in the image section, I'm going to change that to custom, select the URL, and paste in the one I just grabbed. And while we're here, we're going to go ahead and turn on retina just to make sure that everything is nice for larger pixel density displays. So let's save just to save where we're at, because we should probably do that more often. And let's press play again and see how this looks. Awesome. So the roads have changed a little bit of color. And now if we ever decide that we want to use the plane of our map instead of this grass, check out what happens if we just drop this plane's Y position a little bit. We've now got our, our original map tiling complete with the road casings and everything we had.
So that's one design option that you could totally implement on your own. And it would create a really cohesive experience and it would make the user feel really like they're in the same world. But I want to throw a little nature in here and add some actual grass and set this apart from the other map. So I'm going to leave the plane where it was at. Now that all of that is set up, I've decided that I'm not a fan of one thing about this screen. If we press play, this robot really looks huge compared to the scenery. And part of that is because of the camera angle. So let's raise up our camera just a little bit. And now, hmm, actually, maybe about there. Yeah. While the robot still looks pretty big, that's actually what we want. And we've got a much better vantage point of the city. And overall, I just I like the look of this better. So we're going to check where the Y position is at, 2.73. And I'm going to stop running. I'm going to update the camera's Y position to 2.73. And just in case we have to drag the plane around any anymore, I'm going to drag the camera onto the actual plane. And we're just about done with this scene, at least the foundation of it. The last step is we're going to click on our camera and I'm going to add a component. I'm going to add an audio source to it because we want some background music going on. So let's go to our audio folder. I'm going to collapse the Mapbox SDK and the models folder and go to resources, audio, and take a look at what we have. I'm going to grab the capture scene theme and I'm just going to drag that audio clip here onto the audio source. I'm going to make sure that play on awake is turned on and i'm going to set it to loop and then we're going to press play and make sure that this is working okay cool so our music is working i'm going to stop running and it was a little loud and for the sake of balance just like we did with the world scene we're going to turn down the volume on the background music and i'm going to drop it to about 40 percent so point so 0 0.4. That's about where I found before that I liked it. So we'll go ahead and save. And with that, we're going to call this video good. Our scene is now set up. It renders properly, complete with a city in the background and background music. We've got everything in place that we need to get started with setting up the capture scene to do exactly what it was meant to do, capture droids. Great job following along. This is Ben with devslopes.com and we'll see you next time.